Praise our God. Thank you. I should join me in the word of prayer, please. Almighty everlasting God. God, again, may we the people gather here. This is your holy place. God, we come before you acknowledging that you are God. We humble ourselves in your presence, dear God, proclaiming that you're the only true authority. You are our deliverer, our conquering king. You are way making God. Father, you sustain us. You love us beyond measure. So we come to you, Lord, asking that again that you would Allow us to fellowship with you once more. Mm, that you would speak to our hearts and our lives. That you would encourage our living. That you would fight the battles that are lined up in front of us. Give us the strength to live with you another day. God, we give your name praise. Yes. Yes. We give you honor. Yes. We give you glory. We pray your divine will yes. will be done your way in this, your world, for you alone. Yes. You are God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give an honor to Almighty God, who is indeed God, all body, worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor. Worthy. He's worthy. He's the only one that is worthy. He alone wears the title divine, and he wears it well. Yes, he, does. He, he is God. He is God. Says outside of eternity. Uh -huh. What kind of God would do that? Oh, outside of eternity. Outside. He's bigger outside. than forever. Yeah. Yes. We serve a great God. Yes. We serve a great, great God. Great I give God. him honor in this place. Give honor to my, my angel on my before she's out preaching. Somewhere else, that she said, uh, Pastor Sam Bryce did that. He is, and she's, she's there preaching and praying that God will, as I know he will, use her in that place. That she will speak a, a timely word at that portion of the vineyard. Amen? Amen. 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 I give honor to these preachers for their committed service and dedication to God and his people. I thank God for them and for each and every one of you who made it to this place that we might worship our God together. I so appreciate your being here. Uh, you could have gone so many other places. You could have decided not to go anywhere at all. Yeah. But here you right. are. So we, we, uh, I appreciate the fact that we have this opportunity to worship together. Yeah. But as always, I'm going to invite you and encourage you, if you will, please, man, please, sir, mm -hmm. come with me. Let us look into the face of Jesus together. Yeah. Yeah. If we could just see Jesus, we can make it. This world has lost a little bit of mind it used to have. It is been completely out of control. But 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 our God is still in charge. This is still my father's world. Even though we're trying to make a mess of it, it still belongs to him. So we can keep our eyes on the Lord. He'll make a way for us. He'll get us through whatever the situation is we're going through. And if you're breathing, you got a situation to get through. So we, so we do need just to trust God and, and he'll, find, he'll find a way, he'll find a way, he'll find a way to make us, to make us see the other side of this thing. So if you have your Bibles, come with me back to Romans chapter 12. We, we, we spent some time with verse 14 last week. This week we want to spend a little time with verse 15. But we're going to read verses 14 through 16. But we're going to focus in on verse 15. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12. Beginning in verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. But associate with the lowly. Neither be wise in your own sight. Our, our, our focus verse for today, verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. 
Praise our God. Just for a little while, I want to sit together if you will with God. The Christian response to the human condition. How do we respond to the stuff going on around us? How do we respond to, to the, the, the invasion of the world inside the church? How, how do we respond to those we call brothers and sisters in the household of faith? And, and what do we do? And how, how do we bear this thing? Uh, live out this thing that Paul is telling us here that we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those that weep. Now it's going to take me a minute just to kind of uh, set the stage. So if you if you if you will uh, allow me to uh, share with you just a, a, a bit of a personal testimony, a personal thing from from my perspective, I believe I believe that the appropriate transparency is is necessary if we are going to get to what God wants us to be. Now you don't tell everything, don't fly everything up on the flagpole. But 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 appropriate transparency can, can help those around you understand what it is that you're trying to say or in or accomplish in their presence. Alright? Well those of you, those of you, some of you may know that my son and I have a, a relationship that has its own challenge. Now, be clear, be clear, it's not an issue of love. If you want to see my son go off, come for me. And if you want to see me take it to a whole new level, go at him. But, 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 but personally, me and him, we have, we have our own set of challenges. Now, now I, I want to say that my understanding of, of how I saw our relationship shifted in the course of this, uh, this sermon. Mm -hmm. it, it, it moved, and I want to show, I want to, to, you to understand how that happened. I still believe that the things that I think are wrong, that in this life I think they're wrong, and he, I'm sure he feels the same way. And the things that I want, I would change if I could, I still would change those things. And he probably feels the same way. And I always, I've not always, for a long time now, I thought about my son and I, and I thought about our relationship in terms of the prodigal son. I said, well, you know, my son is out there and he's doing his thing and he's living like he's living. And, and, and I'm like, I'm just waiting, I'm waiting. In fact, I had an interesting conversation with a, a young man after Bible study that, that the Lord replayed for me to remind me to help me get here. And, and I, I said, that, you know, it's, it, I, I'm like the prodigal, I'm like the, the father waiting and, and, and saying, when the prodigal comes, I'm, I'm here with open arms. And, and, and that's, that's how I saw with the relationship. I'm, 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 the, I'm, I'm the, here I am, I'm, 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 I'm the father waiting for the son to come back, praying for the son to come back. And that's what, how I saw it forever, and I was okay with seeing it that way, because that left me in a pretty good life. But when I was uh, I was dealing with this thing, and I was sitting in the quiet of my own little sanctuary at home, really listening to God, God asked me a question, a question that kind of shook me, a question that, said, that that made me look at this thing a whole different way. The Lord asked me, "What if you're not the father in the story? What if you're the elder son?" Righteous self saying because you do everything right, because you preach, because you pastor, because you love the God, because you read your Bible, that somehow, what if you're not the father in the story? What if you're the, the elder son? That changed the whole way that I saw that thing because now I'm I'm not the one waiting, I'm the one in rebellion. I'm not I'm not the one that they say, come on, son. I'm the one that refuses to go into the party. I'm not the one that say, wait, 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 come back, son, come back. I'm the one that say, how dare you accept him without an apology? Yeah. Oh. What if I? <laughs> what if I was that elder yeah. son? Oh. And to make it worse, God says you're sitting in my seat. Because if, if you're the elder son pretending to be the daddy, who am I? Go ahead and preach. See, we gotta come to the place. I believe the word of God is real. And I believe when God 
God speaks to you in his word, you need to pay attention. So when God speaks to me through his word, I try to pay attention. I, 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 I say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, that I got out of place. I'm sorry that I got full of myself. I'm sorry that I thought I was doing it right. I'm sorry that I was judging him while I myself stood guilty. God, I'm sorry. My God. But see, this is, this is not a test about me and my son. You see, I'm telling you this story because I heard somewhere that they said that a story is information with a heart. See, a story takes information and, and, and put enough around it so you can feel that thing and you can find yourself in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we come, uh, I'm telling you, so, so that hopefully, probably, uh, maybe, just maybe, you can start changing how you see brothers and sisters of the faith. You can start changing how you see people that you walk with. Now, I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about going out there and allowing their stuff to become your mission. No, I ain't talking about validating sin and justifying failures. That's not what I'm talking about. But as we walk through this thing, just maybe you'll see that we don't have to crucify the one for whom Jesus died. Just maybe, just maybe. Just wait, just, just wait, just wait. Now, now, now the social scientists and, and them kind of folk with the, the, the big degrees, they, they help me understand some things. They, they, they told me, I, I was looking to do this thing and I, I came across some words. And the first word that I came across, I, I kind of knew, but I brushed it off so it refreshed myself, is apathy. Mm -hmm. See, apathy simply means I don't care. Yeah. It, it means I Apathy. Some people suggest that hate is not the opposite, the opposite of love, but apathy is the opposite of love. You see, because they say if you hate somebody, they still on your mind. You still care about it. You still think about it. You still look into it. But, but apathy says that you don't even matter. You dare you. I don't even think about you. You ain't on my mind. What you going through just don't count. So, so, so to, be, to, be, to be apathetic is to not care. Uh -huh. I don't care. It don't matter. You're going through what you're going through, so. You're dealing with what you're dealing with, so. But see, that, that, that deals with how I feel about what you're going through, what happened in your life. The next word, and most of us, we pitch our tea here, we, we're satisfied with being here, we call it sympathy. Sympathy says that I understand, I feel sorry. I feel bad about what you went through. See, sympathy says, I know you lost your job. I feel so bad that you lost your job. Simply says, I, I, feel, I feel so bad that you don't have anything to feed your children. Simply says, I, I hurt for you because you have no house. You see, simply says, this is how I feel about the event in your life. So when you get to apathy and sympathy, it has to do with how I feel about a situation in your life. You see, you see the difference? When, if, I, if, I, if I have apathy, if I have sympathy, it ain't about how you feel, it's about how I feel based upon your situation. And most of us are satisfied with feeling bad because somebody's going through. And we say stuff like, I feel bad, but what can I do? I, 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 I would do something, but, but, but what can I do? So see, the, we, we, we make ourselves okay with sympathy. But sympathy, sympathy is not even the, the, the targeted goal in social sciences. And it's certainly not where God is trying to get us. After sympathy, there comes empathy. You see, but empathy says that I understand. I can identify with what you're going through. Now here's the here. Look, look now I learned, I learned something, y'all. I'm trying to show y'all that I didn't waste all my money in school. Listen. <laughs> Empathy actually has three parts. There's cognitive, emotional, and compassionate. Cognitive empathy says, I understand what you're going through. I can, I, I can, I, I, I know what it is. I, I can identify with it. I, I see what you're going through. I, I know, I don't just feel bad that you got hit, but I, I know that they threw the ball and hit you. You see, empathy starts to build a story around what sympathy just felt bad over. Yes. Yes. Empathy starts saying, 
understand what you're up against. I see why you're suffering. I know what where you've been. You see, you, I, it, it began, it, when you become empathetic, you become, you, be, you start trying to gain the perspective of the one that you're dealing with. You don't just see them in their situation from your perspective, but you try to step in their shoes and see it from their perspective. But when you just do it cognitively, when you just do it intellectually, you just walk away with the understanding. That's not enough. You got to go the next step. You go to they call it emotional. Emotional empathy says not only do I understand, but I can identify. I put my, I come in that place and I start imagining. I start thinking, what if I lost my child? What if it was my dog that got hurt? What if it was my kid that went crazy? What if I was on no drugs? What if I had an addiction? Emotional empathy, you start attaching yourself to their situation. You start feeling that thing. You start feeling it. Start feeling it. Uh-huh. It start working on you. Yes. You don't judge them anymore. Because you start looking at the world through their eyes the best you can. You see where they came from and the challenges that they see up ahead. And all of a sudden you see why. Why this was so devastating to them. Huh. But that's not enough. See, because now, not only do you understand their story and you got in their story, the next one's compassionate in the thing. Uh-huh. This is when you start changing or becoming a player in the story. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Compassion in the says, not only do I see it, now do I understand what you're going through or the best I can. I can't understand uh, completely like you do, but I, I'm doing the best I can to understand what you're in and what you're about, why it matters so much. I, I, I see it. I'm going to do something wherever I can to change this thing. I'm going to help you bear the burden. I'm going to help shoulder your load. Most of us won't help nobody because we haven't learned to empathize with them. We haven't learned to feel what they feel. We haven't learned to walk with them. So if we won't help them, we'll judge them. We'll condemn them. We'll give them good advice, but we won't help. And we won't help because we don't feel it. And we don't feel it because we ain't thought about it from their perspective. We got to get the place where we start thinking about all way. Look what they're up against. Look what they went through. Look what came out. The Lord, the Lord, God is my same, the same little sanctuary, y'all. And God gave me this example. It just wasn't true to me. So I'm going to share it with you. I don't know. But see, I, I, I grew up with dogs, but I ain't a dog lover like that. I'm not a pet lover like that. I, no, no, ain't no dog going to be licking me all in the face. I know, but. And, and, and I ain't gonna, just, this is just me, just, just me. I ain't gonna spend people money to go to take it to the doctor. I, I just, I, I just, uh, this is just me, just me. I ain't gonna, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna get a casket and buy a grave plot somewhere and, and have an undertaker get my dog ready so I can go out. I, I'm just not gonna do that.
understand it, but here's the problem. Here's the issue. We're, we're challenged to be empathetic in, 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 in a narcissistic world. That's right. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. That's so good. The world is so narcissistic, yeah. so yeah. self-focused, yeah. so self-absorbed, yeah. willing to do yeah. anything to come out on top, willing to steal your wife's savings so they can have a good day. Oh! 
not what they did. It's not what they went through. It's not what they did to themselves. It's not what they deserve. It's over the where they are. Yes. They're in your experience. Yes. They're crying. Yes. What good is it me to remind them mm. of what brought on their tears? You're right. You're right. Just maybe I had to take a tissue right. and come alongside. Yes. You see, because truth, when you have compassionate empathy, yes. when you have the love that Paul is talking about here. You're not satisfied with watching someone else suffer. Watching them suffer is more painful than that for them. Yes, 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 yes. Now yes. And you have not, and you have not come yes. to the place where yes. watching someone suffer is more painful than helping them. Then you have you have not come to the depth of love yet. There comes a place where watching them suffer is harder than walking. So you start filming. Yes. Yes. And you see what they're going through. Yes. When you come alongside. Yes. It don't mean I validate you. Mm-hmm. It don't mean that no, no. Smoking weed is still wrong. No. Sleeping around is still wrong. No. Lying, cussing, acting crazy yes. is still wrong. Yes. You're still messed up. Yes. It's still, I, I still call it wrong. I still say it's sin. Homosexuality, still sin. Yes. Lying and cheating and, 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 and fornicating and committing adultery, still wrong. Yes, Self righteousness, pride, arrogance, because of right, it's still wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. It's still wrong. Yes. Still wrong. But that doesn't mean yes. that I can't yes. come alongside. Yes. I say, because you hurt. Yes. I hurt with you. Yes. I don't hurt over your stuff. Yes. I hurt with you. Because yes. you're the one yes. that's important here. Yes. You're the one that matters. Yes. So we walk around in this church and we see brothers and sisters going through and we just say, oh, I'm just going to pray for them. You ain't doing enough with your sympathetic self. You're not doing enough. You've got to say, no. Yeah. I'm pulling beyond sympathy. I'm pulling beyond the fear that you're going to cuss me out. Tell me to stay in my place. Mind my business. Leave me alone. They may say all of that, but you don't They may tell you everything. Get out of my face. Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. And then you know what you do? You get out of their face and leave them alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Until you got another chance to help. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. You don't get mad to see. Can't help. Some people just can't help. You know why? Because we're not supposed to use. You should never use someone else's joy or sorrow yeah. to vindicate your feelings. Uh-huh. As they going through, how many times I heard they going through? Uh huh. I told them what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. They should have come over with me, like I said. See, look, look, look who they going through. See, you can't. Or, or how many times have you felt? Be honest. Don't raise your hand. Don't say nothing to but to you and the Holy Ghost. How many times have you felt felt jealous because someone else was rejoicing and you thought somehow it should have been you? It should have been me. Or even if you think it should have been you, you're like, how come they get to rejoice all the time? Where's the joy in my life? So we start hating on them because they're rejoicing. And we're saying over here saying, when's my turn? Rather than doing what the Bible is saying, that we ought to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice, that's what God said. Because that's where we walk in. Now, now listen, 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 listen. And I'm all done, I'm done, I'm done. I am the whole, I didn't touch that thing. But anyway, listen, listen, get this, get this, get this. The person who weeps and rejoices with the other, just take a moment, if you will, to consider their posture. They don't enter the situation as one in pain. They don't enter the situation as one rejoicing. They enter as one coming with the strength, the ability, and the will to be a blessing. That means they come not to be victorious, but they come from a posture of victory. 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. you, you, you all know, y'all didn't get it, y'all didn't get it, y'all didn't get it. They don't come to fight to win. Mm -hmm. They come having won to claim. Yes, yes, yes. 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 They, they come saying, God has already given me the strength to help you get out. God has already given me the ability to help you shout your praise. God has already given me the strength, the victory, the wisdom, the knowledge. Why? Because as you begin to take on their story, you are have a different perspective. You can see where victory is. They're still in the weeds. They're still in the bushes. They can't see the way out. But when God sees you, you got a plan. You got a strategy. You know what God can do. But if you don't know how, If you don't step in the mess, yeah. my Lord. if you don't get in the mix, mm -hmm. now most of them are mean because they're too afraid to be nice. Wow. 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm, wow. just wow. Wow. <laughs> Most of them are mean because they're too afraid to be nice. Yeah. See, if I'm mean, yeah. that's like putting a get away from me sign. Yeah. People leave me alone. I become so abrasive that folks don't want no part. So they, they, they give me a wide burn. Yes, yes. You see, because why? Because I'm really afraid. Yes. I'm afraid to let you get close. Yes. I'm afraid that you're going to see how weak I am. Uh -huh. I'm afraid that you're going to see that I really need more than I proclaim. I'm afraid that you're going to see that I ain't as strong as I'm pretending to be. I don't know what I, but I act like I know. So I need to keep you away because I'm too afraid to let you get close. So think of the, 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 the courage, the, 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 the wisdom, the, the, the strength that those who say, not only am I going to let you get close, but I'm going to come close to you so I can step in your business not knowing what you're going to say to me. Uh -huh. oh. yeah. My God. Come on, y'all. Jesus. You don't do this thing right here. Mm -hmm. We Those are weak. Mm -hmm. Rejoice. Those who rejoice. Yes, yes. As a, that's just a factor, a product of human nature. Yes, yes. You don't grow into this. Yeah. You fade into this. Come on. You can't be a Christian long enough uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. to do this. Uh -huh. You have to surrender deep enough yes. to do this. Yes. You see, it's, that's why Paul starts the text. Back 12, 1, he says, you know, he's Give your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is unreasonable. We say service, reasonable worship, reasonable surrender to God. It's only, it only makes sense to worship God by offering Him your body as a living sacrifice. You see, this only comes natural to those who love God enough to let the Spirit of God flow through. I know some of us, some of us are challenged by, by this because, quite frank, frankly, we're not there yet. We're not ready to submit yet. Other of us, we're on the other side. We think, yeah, I got that. I got that knock. Of the two, the second is the most dangerous position. Yes, sir. Those who think, I ain't there yet, I can't do it, is actually in a better position than those who think, yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because when you think, I got that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you really don't. Yeah, yeah. You're just wearing blinders when it comes to you. Yeah. You're judging your intent as though you actually did it. Yeah. I intended to help, and you act that like you really did help. No, an intent is not an action. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say, I got it, you already put yourself at a disadvantage. But the most powerful place to be is a place like God right now. Give me the ability to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Now God, now God, help me not to judge them, but just to, to gain their perspective. Apathy, sympathy is about my feelings, about their, their event. It deals with an event that happened to you, and this is how I feel about what happened to you. Yes. The three 
levels of empathy. It's about me understanding how you feel. It goes from what I feel to what you feel. It goes from your event to your story. What's your life about? What are you up against? What are you going through? Yes, yes. So church, yes. church really, in a world where it's so, so obvious that we need each other, Hallelujah. let's blow past apathy and sympathy, wow. and cognitively, emotional yeah. empathy. Yeah. Let's go to the place where the Bible starts. Yeah. Let's get to the place of compassion empathy, what the Bible calls love, compassion, yeah. where it, it yeah. requires. No, I, did, I did a quick study, not an exhaustive study. I did a quick study because last last night, actually, because I it just popped in my head, so I did it. And I went to the article too. This is a good one, man. I went to I went to uh, uh, the strong and I typed in compassion, and everywhere the word compassion popped up, especially in the New Testament. I read just a, uh, just around it, not everywhere, most of the places. I just read well around it, and what I discovered is this: the word compassion, compassion, which was closely related to what we're calling here, compassion, empathy, and love. It, it's, it's only really used when 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 Jesus hears someone's story and then works a miracle. Wow. He hears the story and he does something about it. Yeah. So he said, he said, he says, he says, he looked upon the five thousand and compassion upon them. And then he fell. You see, so so just just look, just 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 a quick study. Just look at it. Put in compassion in the King James and then look, look at, look at, look at it. Now there's just some different words, but but the look look at the ones and Jesus it comes up and he says. It shows that he is able, Jesus is able to identify with our story and step in the midst of our story and change things. Ain't that the whole meaning of Emmanuel? God with us. He stepped into our story, became one of us. He understood life from our perspective. And then he did something to rescue us. If we don't be like Jesus, that's what we have to do. Step in their story. Understand life from their perspective. And then do something to make their lives better.